Hey, what's up? This is Hunter with Tortoise and Hair Software, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, and I'm going to run you through the company overview presentation that I give on sales calls when I don't have a lot of information about what a prospect wants, and they're just trying to little, learn a little bit more about what the company does and how we fit in. Um, so let's dive right in. So before I dive in and actually kind of do this presentation, I just want to talk about the importance of having a presentation like this, because um, this is something I always try to get my customers to kind of think about and do, and oftentimes they don't necessarily like pay a lot of attention to that advice, that advice. but I have found having this presentation um, and being able to create a consistent sales experience and uh, a good first impression um, for more upper funnel sort of people that are, you know, they know they have the marketing problem, they know they want to hire somebody, but they don't even know what the agency landscape looks like. They don't know, you know, how we fit in. Like, they just know that we do some sort of marketing. Maybe they found us through some PPC article or SEO article or whatever it was, and they just want to learn more. Um, the same thing happens in the IT space. Like, you know, there are prospects out there who knows what an MSP um, is and does, but not every MSP is the same. There's also break fix IT companies, there's uh, managed security service providers, so um, you need to be able to tell people like what your MSP does and how you fit into the landscape and deliver a presentation like this because you know s sometimes I don't even deliver this presentation. We just sit and talk and I just talk to the prospect for an hour, but sometimes people don't want that. Sometimes people just want to um, get on the call do a quick introductions for you know a couple of minutes and sit back with a cup of coffee and say you know you impress me I you know I'm here considering your company so I'm gonna give you you know a half hour here to impress me with whatever you got to say so go and you need to be prepared for that situation and having a presentation like this is essential in those scenarios so you know with that said we'll uh, dive right into the presentation now all right, so here's our kind of company overview presentation. Um, I built this presentation kind of off of a story brand format and um, is you know built for an MSP owner. Um, I do want to kind of customize these presentation for uh, various ICPs because I've been talking to um, a lot more like MSP marketers, like you know VP of marketing or whatevers. Um, but this particular presentation is. Uh, oriented towards um, an MSP owner specifically, and you'll probably see some of that with it as we get started. Um, okay, so here's our this is a tortoise and hare software company overview. Um, you know, we'll start with uh, a company overview, and then we'll talk about a needs assessment for your company, and then we'll get to a decision point on whether we want to go to the next meeting or take whatever the next steps may be. Um, so starting off here, let's talk about what's in a name. Um, we'll address the elephant in the room here. The company is called Tortoise and Hare Software, but we are not a software company right now. Um, so I founded this company in 2018, um, and I originally wanted to do some software consulting um, while building a GDPR-related SaaS product in anticipation of a national law being passed in the United States. Um, GDPR is the European regulation for data privacy um, and there was a lot of speculation that that would be that would come to the US at the time as a federal national law um, and <laughs> I quickly found out you know when uh, I started this company that although I was getting blown up constantly with recruiter emails for .NET development help um, there's not a lot of demand uh, for contract.net help on a kind of part-time basis. So I ended up dusting off some WordPress skills and really started out building websites and adding in after launch support for people. Um, and then, you know, through that process, kind of pivoted into online marketing and started doing SEO and helping out with pay-per-click ads. Um, so that's how we went from Tortoise and Hare software to doing uh, marketing for people. But I have kept the brand name the same because I get constant great feedback on it. People will come up to me at trade shows, tell me how much they love the, the name and the logo and everything like that. So, um, And long term, I would like to add in some software products into the mix so it makes sense. Um, 
started out, uh, you know, doing uh, website builds and marketing for pretty much any industry. Um, and that was kind of the 28 to 2021 20, years. Uh, in 2021 or 2020, when the kind of pandemic hit, uh, a lot of the local marketing I was doing, going to networking events, events and things like that had been cut off. But I was already kind of starting to see that like my customers, my best customers were in the technology sector. Um, I'd started working with a SaaS company and an IT company in Jacksonville. And, you know, those companies really liked that I had a technical background and, um, you know, liked that I knew how to um, talk their businesses lingo um, when doing the marketing stuff. Um, so in 2020, uh, one, I narrowed focus of the company to working only with B2B technology um, companies. And then in uh, 2023, uh, I ended up narrowing focus to the managed IT sector because I started to see that a lot of my pipeline and revenue was um, in the MSP space. And uh, in a lot of ways, this business gels much more uh, cleanly with an MSP model. You know, SaaS companies, they tend to want to spend, you know, large sums of money, so they usually want a bigger agency. You know, they're under from pressure from their venture venture capital investors to, you know, get results and scale up super fast. So we just don't generally meet the scale requirements and speed requirements that a, you know, VC-funded SaaS company demands. Um, but a MSP, local MSP, um, even regional provider is usually looking for some form of part-time marketing help um, where we can kind of you know fit in just as their PPC provider, just as their SEO provider. Um, so a lot of compatibility there um, from a pricing standpoint, scale standpoint, and all those things. Um, so again, narrowed focus to the MSP sector in 2023 and have been doing that uh, ever since. And that's been a you know jumping off point and We've been growing rapidly and had a lot of success in there so far. Um, key personnel, Hunter Nelson, that is me, president of Tortoise and Hare Software. Uh, just a quick background on me. Did my IT degree at Florida State in 2009. Uh, worked in the tech sector for about 10 years. The first five years of those were as like analyst type roles, um, doing like software uh, implementations and frequently configuring marketing software. Um, like web analytics platforms and things like that. Um, did some like, you know, publisher advertising configurations and, um, you know, stuff like that. Then I spent about five years as a .NET developer, um, which is where I kind of picked up some of my more um, robust uh, coding skills. I, I was tinkering with WordPress back in 2005, so I've had on and off exposure to WordPress throughout um, pretty much since like high school. Um, and uh, but I did spend five years as a .NET developer and got more of like computer science exposure, object-oriented programming, things like that. Um, again, started the business in 2018 and will be six years in September uh, operating TNHS. Um, and I'm the project lead and primary contributor for pretty much everything that goes on. Um, it is a small company. Uh, currently, it's me and three part-time contractors, uh, designer, developer, and copywriter, um, but we are growing fast, and um, who knows where we'll be a year from now. Um, so let's let ASAP tell you the story of an MSP. Uh, ASAP is one of our brand characters here at Tortoise & Hare Software. Um, so let's think about a fictitious MSP owner who wanted to grow their business. They used a, they had a small marketing budget, but used it for to used it to uh, greed for leads, um, and they burned through agencies, consultants, and budget before kind of doing it all themselves. And now they spend their days on social media, grumpily telling all who will listen the perils of hiring a marketing agency. If you spend any time on uh, Reddit's MSP or r slash msp then you know you know the kind of persona that i'm talking about um but let's tell you the story of what your msp could be you know this msp owner set big hairy audacious goals for their growth they thought strategically about the pieces they needed to get there and worry less about immediate lead generation more about building the team and the infrastructure and kind of the pieces they need to succeed over the long term 
Um, and then with that time, patience, and execution, they build a sustainable marketing pipeline that feeds their growth. Um, and this is one thing I, you know, kind of try to talk to my clients about. Um, of course, you know, most MSPs wait until the marketing problem has gone way past urgent. Um, so a lot of them do need leads in some sort of short time frame. Um, but, you know, when thinking about a marketing program and kind of like overlaying that with like the current economic conditions and things like that, you know, you, you should always think more about like, what is my trajectory more than my like current month's performance? Because if the trajectory is going up, the leads are going to come. Um, so focus more about like, you know, is the, are you getting the right traffic from the right people and you know, is lead volume going up over time? You know, cause like um, even within a, a one year period, there's gonna be ups and downs with the seasonal variants. So like, are we doing better than we did last year is more of an important question than what, how did we do this exact month? Um, so that's just kind of a mindset thing. Um, now thinking more about like the pieces you need uh, to kind of start building that like sustainable marketing pipeline. You know, you need a strategy, kind of a market position, you know, your ideal customer profiles, you know, customer research on what your buyers want. You need a defined brand, which includes like colors, typography, messaging, core values, mission statement, a uh, charity or cause that you support, you know, things like that. Um, you know, you need a quality website, website that's built from that strategy, from that brand, from that messaging that you've already established. Um, and then that will serve as a place for prospects to learn more about your company and consider your brand as an option in the marketplace. Also a place for them to make contact when they're ready to engage. Um, <coughs> once you've got that um, you know, website in place, uh, you need to start building your kind of top, top of funnel. Um, you know, MSPs in general kind of suffer from a crushing lack of brand awareness, like, and they just really underestimate the need to just reach a lot of people. Um, obviously you want to reach the right people, but like, it's hard to really like reach people with like a complete scalpel in the online marketing space, especially with how di data privacy regulations have kind of evolved and taken targeting criteria away in ad accounts and targeting, targeting accuracy. Um, you know, SEO is something that you're going to reach, always going to reach like people inside and outside of your target market. Um, so you need, you know, a few thousand visitors per month going to a website at a minimum to really like start seeing like um, any sort of like, you know, traction. Um, so thinking about how do you, how do we start driving that traffic and building that top of funnel as they call it? You know, it's blog content. It's building landing pages on your websites to cut up your services in different ways. It's building backlinks to your website. Uh, it's social media brand ads that are more top of funnel display ads. It's YouTube content. It's appointment setters. It's cold email. Like all that stuff is really just how do we get first touches and first handful of touches and just build a you know awareness with the people that we're trying to reach. Uh, because people just can't do business with a business they've never even heard of. So um, got to build that brand awareness. Once you've got that you know, brand awareness, you need to start rounding out your middle funnels, middle funnel stuff. And that's like gated offers and lead magnets to try and get people's email addresses, having email nurture sequences in place to kind of back those up, having an email newsletter to just kind of tell people what's going on with your company, it's social media posting on various platforms. It's running retargeting ads to, you know, buy like more targeted reach on social media with people who have already visited your website or already followed your company page, things like that. It's buyer enablement coll collateral, one pagers, presentations like this. It's phone call follow up for the, you know, um, people that you may have done lead scoring with in your CRM and identified them as like, um, very engaged and might just need that little nudge of a phone call to uh, kind of bring them down the funnel. Um, you know, and all these are really like nurture mechanisms to help people that have, you know, already discovered your brand, you know, continue advancing their way towards actually reaching out and becoming a, a lead. Um, and then at the bottom of funnel, you need those like lead capture mechanisms. And that's those paid search ads. That's um, 
social media like lead gen forms. Um, social media has like multi you know functions within a marketing funnel. You know, there's top of funnel awareness type stuff. There's lead generation specific ads where you can fill out a form directly on the platform. So that's when I say that's what I'm talking about when I say no sh social native lead gen ads. You know, you need those case studies, you need those testimonials um, and more sales enablement materials. Um, you know, cause once you get people interested and in, um, are doing the demand capture, like even if they're not necessarily ready to reach out and talk to you, they might be ready to download sales enablement stuff and start sharing it with their team and building an, a case to the other executives because, you know, the larger, more sophisticated deals are going to be buying by committee. So, you know, enable people to champion your brand. Um, so that you know helps you capture those leads and create those sales opportunities. Um, and if you have like this, you know, more robust full funnel, this is where you'll have people that are just like, they're they're in by the time they talk to you. Like by the time they reach out, schedule that initial sales meeting, they already know about your company. They know what you can do. They've probably compared you against other providers. So like they're really more ready to talk about like you know what are what are we what's it going to take spend wise and stuff like that. Um, and they'll be showing up to your sales meetings and they'll be engaged and, you know, very interested. Um, so, you know, kind of where's tortoise and hare software kind of fit in within this, like, um, building out like a marketing funnel like this. Um, we're helping out with like website development and management, um, you know, helping you translate those brands into like a website. Um, we're helping with, uh, digital advertising on Google, LinkedIn, other social media platforms, and that can, again, play a role at various stages in the funnel. There's a lot of different types of like advertising campaigns you can run on both Google Ads and uh, social media platforms, so we're helping out at various stages there. Um, you know, we're helping out with web content development, so that's like landing pages, squeeze pages, uh, blog content, um, SEO, uh, Again, our technical background and being an MSP focused marketing agency, this is one of the best ways we can help. It's just like, it's so hard to find agencies that are generalist agencies that can plug in and be able to create content for MSPs because they just don't know anything about technology in a lot of cases. Most, most generalist agencies are working uh, with a lot of e-commerce brands and the type of, you know, it doesn't take a experienced writer to be able to talk about why, you know, pancakes made them feel good or something like that um, or why you know this bar of soap helps get you clean better than the next one but you know having those same people try to you know talk about like networking and cybersecurity it's just a big challenge um, so our approach um, is we generally kind of start with a bottom-up approach um, and I don't know if this is necessarily the best approach but Again, like I said, a lot of MSPs are usually coming to us when we have, um, you know, the marketing problem is, you know, past urgent. Um, they uh, oftentimes have already gone through one to two other agencies beforehand and, you know, wasted a lot of money um, and time. And, you know, they're just probably tried it themselves for a little bit and all that stuff. And, um, you know, just from an agency perspective, like, we try to show like some sort of traction early and then um, try to redu reduce a cost per lead as we like layer on additional services. So we usually are starting by helping them get their website and landing pages and kind of website, their conversion den ironed out, um, optimized and making it super easy for their prospects to convert. And then we're typically starting with a paid search program after that because that's kind of the most bottom of funnel, high intent people that you can like reach is through those like people searching for like managed IT provider, IT company near me, like local IT support, things like that. Those are high intent in market buyers. Paid search is an expensive way to reach people and generate leads, but it's also probably the fastest and most direct way to reach people and generate leads online in the online marketing realm. So for better or worse, that's usually how we're starting. Um, once we've kind of demonstrated that we can generate some results and you know show some traction, then we're usually layering on SEO, getting more involved in social media, and kind of moving up the funnel. Um, so we're really building things in more of like uh, 
you know, bottom of funnel, then the middle funnel, then the top of funnel, rather than, you know, the other way down. Um, um, so that's that's kind of our approach, our built from the bottom up approach. Um, so why tortoise and hare software? Um, we make it super easy to buy. We work primarily off an MSA and retainers. Uh, no long-term contracts. Uh, our outs are in the 45-day range, roughly. Um, we do electronic invoicing with QuickBooks and credit card payment options. Um, I didn't realize this when I kind of first started out, but um, offering credit card payments is somewhat rare. A lot of people are doing bank transfer or payable by check sort of stuff. So if you need to you know, pay that via credit card, you know, that is a way for you to finance whatever you need to do. Um, and then we're doing net 15 billing and we're moving pretty quickly. Um, a lot of agencies, I mean, we have one client that is, uh, it's taken over a year for them to get a new website out and it's still not out. Um, so we're turning around things quickly. Um, we work on more of an agile basis and kind of do uh, planned delivery of um, incremental work in one month sprints um, so like we're continually able to demonstrate like incremental progress which is just again something not a lot of other, not a lot of other agencies um, can do they're usually still more on like the waterfall model with um, you know fixed s scope projects that are more three to six month projects that are typically going over budget and over time um, so just as what is there um, kind of a good track record of success here. Um, you know, we've got big agency expertise and are delivering small agency care. Um, so that's one of the main reasons to kind of like, you know, choose us. Um, we're working more closely with our clients. Um, and as a small company, you're getting kind of direct to the expert. Um, that's me sort of support rather than, you know, having to work constantly through an account manager who may or may not know a ton about marketing directly and may have to be interacting with a bunch of different experts on the back end to try and coordinate, which just slows things down and makes them cost a lot more and all that stuff. Um, you know, we've got a track record of delivering high impact marketing solutions to B2B technology companies. Although we are MSP specific right now, done work for SaaS companies and cybersecurity companies, so um, we do have like some uh, expertise in a more high scale, high competition environment, which we you know can help bring down to the MSP space, which is still a developing sector in in terms of like online marketing. Um, we've managed over seven hundred fifty thousand in Google ad spend. That's probably going to be a million by the end of the year and have helped companies source over seven million in new annual revenues. Again, that figure is going to be updated by the end of the year. Um, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that um, I personally have probably some of the highest um, individual experience managing pay-per-click advertising accounts. Um, you know, other MSP marketing agencies do uh, pay-per-click advertising. Um, but you know, it's not, it's various people handling that with like, you know, employees coming in and out of the business and everything. Um, so, you know, it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to find someone who has as much direct experience managing MSP advertising accounts specifically. Um, um, another reason to choose us, you know, we're using market leading tools to deliver our services. Um, you know, we spend quite a bit of money on these tools to help deliver our services. And if you want to you know, launch an effective marketing program, you would have to spend uh, quite a bit of money to get these tools going up yourself. So getting fractional access to some of these tools is part of a value proposition in addition to the labor and expertise. Um, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about there because you're doing the same thing as an MSP to your clients. I mean, you're spending a fortune on cybersecurity tools and RMMs and PSAs and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then getting, you know, fractional provisioning of uh, access to those to your clients. Um, uh, what customers are saying. Um, I'm not going to kind of go through all this, but we've got all sorts of great testimonials that you can go browse on our website and look through our uh, reviews on Google. You can also check out our case studies and things like that, um, where we talk a little bit more about our 
um, results and things that we've done for our clients. Um, but yeah, just wanted to run through that uh, presentation for you. So hope you liked it and go to the outro now. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked the presentation. Again, having a presentation like this is super important to be able to just deliver a generic explanation of your company and overview to a prospect that may not have something specific that they're looking for yet and may just want to learn a little bit more about your company and where they fit in. Um, delivering these presentations can feel like, you know, can be time consuming, but definitely leads to deals closed down the line. You know, I uh, very frequently have people that I talk to once and then they convert and actually get started, you know, six months later. Um, and, but I also have people, you know, close within 30 days. It really just depends on where your prospect is in their buying life cycle. But being able to deliver a consistent sales experience and a quality presentation to somebody who's ready to talk to sales but isn't necessarily like ready to buy yet um, is a valuable asset that can help, you know, increase the growth rate of your MSP and uh, help your MSP close more deals. Um, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And if you, again, if you like the video, uh, please like, subscribe, follow, things like that. I'm Hunter Nelson, and thanks for watching.